a while, hey. <coughs> and I think this is this is the first time I'm doing it using my iPad. So the camera's a little wonky and it's a little weird, but we'll manage. How is everybody doing tonight? There are a couple people just strolling on in. I hope you're having a great day. It is crazy storming out here in Detroit right now. It just blew on in and just knocked everything over. I'm surprised the power didn't go out. I only took like one video of it. It was pretty cool. It was out my door. Hey, Alan. Um, if you look on my Instagram, or actually, no, I posted it on my, um, battling a cold. You should make some garlic soup. That actually helps. Um, do I have garlic? Can we make garlic soup now? We can't, I don't have the garlic. I don't have enough garlic, but if I did, I would make some with you. Hello, hi. My dogs are like, who the fuck is he talking to right now? Say hi. Hey boys. Hey girl. Hey boy. Hi. I don't have anything for you to eat. I'm cutting mushrooms. Okay, cool. Uh, what are their names? Their names are, the big one is Mochi. She is a pit bull. And the little one is Hugo. Right now I'm just cutting like the, yeah, this camera is weird. Right now I'm just cutting off like the uh, dirty stems off of like some shiitake mushrooms. I literally just have a whole bunch of random stuff in my fridge. Some like tomatoes going bad, all sorts of stuff um, that just need to be used up, which means I'm making a stew, which is fine because, you know, it's been raining. Swana food. Well, thank you. I would love to try that sometime. Um, as some of you might know, shiitake mushrooms are used to flavor a lot of things, but mostly dried. Dried mushrooms have more flavor because it's all concentrated. And I think something happens to like the compounds in there. So that when they're dried, they're actually more flavorful than when they're fresh, but they're fun to eat when they're fresh. So they do have natural MSG. Let's put these here. Let's put my clean ones here. And like, I've got a bunch, a whole bunch to go through. So this is pretty much going to be like a soup. I'm not even gonna, and I'm not even gonna chop these up. I'm gonna like put them in a hole and let them stew. Who knew I wanted this content? I did not. I don't know. I don't know that anybody wants this content. I'm just cooking. We're just hanging out because neither of us have anything better to do. Well, maybe you have something better to do. I don't. Well, no, I do, but I'd rather not do it right now, so. How long should you stew mushrooms? Well, that's the beautiful part about mushrooms, right? Mushrooms, more than meat, more than vegetable, um, well, meat is protein and more than cellulose, which is vegetables. But mushrooms, the way that they are made up, they're, it actually makes it very hard to overcook them. So overcooking mushrooms is very difficult. Burning mushrooms is very difficult. Um, you actually have to work, pretty much try to ruin them in this way. So you can kind of like stew mushrooms for as long as you want and get all that flavor out of there. And before anything else, like, like no, after everything else, mushrooms will be the last things that you will overcook in a stew. Can you loudly whisper chimichanga for $2? That depends. What is it for? <laughs> I'll I'll say it. I'll say it just because you are so kind as to do, Jimmy Chonga. 
because you know, we don't kink shame around here. Hopefully you're of age. I'm gonna, you know what? We're not even, no, there we go. I did it. What you do with that is now yours. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're doing, we're almost, I'm almost through all of these. And like, even though these, you could tell these were like grown inside like, um, like a mushroom farm or stuff because all of the mushroom here is completely clean already, except for the little tiny base, the nubbins of the mushroom. Thank you, I asked that to everyone. <laughs> Well, if you're recording it, I, I look forward to like the super cut of a whole bunch of random tiny YouTubers whispering chimichanga very loudly for $2. But if I hear that you paid somebody more money for it, I'm gonna come after you. Do you use the nubbins? Um, sometimes. I will sometimes save them and use them for stock, but not today because everything is kind of like on its way out anyway. Um, I'm not trying to save more stuff. I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is use up stuff right now, so. All right, so these are done. My grandmother cooked with dried mushrooms all the time for her, ooh, there we go, for her cup. Capusta, capusta, capusta. She cleaned them and soaked them overnight, starting with hot water. Yes, that is something that you should do. But I am feeling very lazy, so we're just gonna we're just gonna boil these. I feel like we're all just waiting at the dining table watching me cook. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's cute. I like that. Um, next mushrooms that we're using. Hopefully these have not, these are very, very moist. Hopefully they haven't molded over, but does. Yeah, we're still good. We got some chestnuts, got some chestnut mushrooms. If you've never had chestnut mushrooms, they are delicious. They smell, mm, they smell like mushrooms. But uh, the stalks of these are nice and firm and they have almost like the texture of asparagus, but then like the sweet, sweet umami that you get from mushrooms. Is there a way for me to keep the chat on? Top chat, live chat, all messages are visible. There we go, how is that? There, I can see them now. And as these are nice and firm. Why does it go away though? I want it to stay. Ugh, I don't want filters. Hide all chat messages, super. Okay, well, it does not, it doesn't, the. Shut out, oh, shout out to your video about Jim Rose and larger bodies. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad it helped you. It was always something that weighed on my mind, especially with people like. Um, well, he's been banned off of Instagram now, but that Andrew, what's his face? He was doing too much. These are massive. Look at this thing. It's kind of scary looking, but it's good eating. Got a really pretty cross section too. Am I a big Eminem fan? Uh, maybe when I was younger. I used to listen to him encore. I think that was the last album I ever listened to him of his.
But aren't you two Detroit homies? No, but I know what he doesn't live in Detroit. I think he lives in West Bloomfield, which is like where the rich people live or one of the places that the rich people live. Also the Russian mob. So we got a whole bunch of chopped up mushrooms now. Let's see what else we got. Oh, excuse me, pups. Ah, old tomatoes. Let's use these. The tomatoes will be warm by the time we're done with them. We've got egg, we've got corn. Let's use corn. Literally just using everything that we've got. Hey, hi. Hello there. Uh, got some poblano peppers. We can char these. That's one, that's one good thing about having a gas stove. Is that this? Is this a studio kitchen in the basement? No, this is um, a temporary housing situation. Uh, this is a temporary housing situation while my studio kitchen <coughs> is being built. Never seen a microwave stuck to a cupboard like that. It's just a built-in microwave. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a nice one. These are Italian striped Romas. They are a paste tomato, which means they're better for sauces and soups than actual eating, which is why I'm excited to use them, but you cut them open and they're so pretty. I don't even know what I'm cooking yet. This is a past its prime heirloom tomato. But as you can see from the slice, it is still perfectly good on the inside, just like you. What song artist is this? This is a whole bunch of royalty-free music. So I don't get in trouble for playing some music on my live. Oops. All right, there was that. And now, how's the Poblano doing? Define, am I even allowed to say that word if I'm not Italian? I don't even, I don't know. Let us know what you decided, what's cooking? Do we get an invite? Hello from Virginia, hello there. <laughs> Love it over there. Are, uh, are crabs or oysters in season? I've got friends out there and uh, they, have a, they have a house right on the river or on the bay. We had did a crab boil the last time we went there. Sleepy in a good way, that's good. Chill vibes are the best vibes. Crabs are not, crabs are not sure about oysters. Man, the crabs are, blue crabs are so good up there. So corn is fantastic to add to any soup because it makes everything just a little bit sweeter. 
Just like you. We're gonna run, that's gonna get like, we're gonna run out of those pretty quick. You like corn, I can, we can be corn friends, we can be. Do I compost? No, I don't have a yard. Um, and we don't have composting solutions out here in Detroit. Maybe someday. San Francisco composting stuff is, is amazing. All right, so we've got some corn there. We'll use the stop pot since somebody was admiring it. Fine. Everything's fine. Okay. Uh, you have a unique cooking style. Do I shop at Whole Foods or most of the time at the farmer's market? I shop wherever, for whatever I need. Whoever's got what I need, pretty much. Um, I think at this point I've just like, Turned. I've applied like my restaurant skills to home cooking, so it's uh, I wish everyone could compost too. Do you have a particular opinion about fusion cuisine? Uh, not really. Like, it's not what it used to be, which is a good thing. Sneaky restaurant sounds like a good story. Uh, <laughs> it is. Story of my like secret restaurant that I used to have. Um, but yeah, fusion cuisine now is like more like third culture. I call it third culture cuisine because it's kind of like all of the people that fusion was basing their stuff off of are now cooking the food. Not exactly taking the narrative back, but also yes, taking the narrative back. Do you have any restaurant style kitchen gadgets? Well, this is a spice grinder. I have been testing out a lot of spices recently. Burlap and Barrel sent me a bunch of spices. I also have my daba here, my masala daba, which smells amazing. And I will be using that. But Uh, ooh, I got a hit of all of those spices. It smelled amazing. So, so good. Okay, the, this poblano smells good. Just, oh, it's almost got that. We're just gonna wash, like you see how we like got this all charred in the skin. We'll wash that off. Literally like under, under some tap water and get rid of the char. All that bitterness will be gone, and what will be underneath, um, underneath all that char will be just like this sweet roasted pepper. What's happening to those mushrooms? They will be probably, I, let's see, we'll, we'll saute them in either some oil or some butter. We'll paste up, we'll also do the same with tomatoes. We'll get a bit a hit of red wine and then we will, ooh, then we'll put some like old kimchi in the stew. We'll do a stew of old kimchi and some um, dunjang, which I have in the fridge.
What's the name of my haircut? Oh, my haircut's over over long right now, but it's um French crop. It's called a French crop. Well, while those are finishing roasting, we can wash this guy. See, all that char, that burnt skin, just comes right off. And it reveals like this green, emerald green flesh that's like gonna be sweet and delicious. What's your takes on gas and electric? I will always prefer induction because it's safer and better. I'm just stuck with this gas thing right now because it's all I have. But soon, I'm gonna be all electric in my new kitchen studio. In my new studio kitchen will be all electric and it'll be solar powered as well. Today was a great test for it. My solar panels did not fall off, did not come off the ceiling. Yeah. Running water when your electronics is stressing, it's okay. I have, I bought the insurance. Got it. The roasted pavlano here, which I will add to with the mushrooms, but not before I take. Mmm. There is something about charred poblano peppers that tastes like butter. It tastes like butter on its own, and it's so good. Ooh, that was a little overcharged, but it's fine. We've got two more. All right, let's see. Mushrooms first, and then the tomatoes. Yes. We'll do the mushrooms first, and then the tomatoes. And uh, it's not anime music, it's... Uh, Uh, it's it's just a uh, royalty free music. It's the same music that I use in the background for all of my long form videos If I don't have charcoal or gas Well, if I ever needed to char something I you can use an infrared grill Which I do have What music is in my current rotation? Um, hmm. Oh, hello, and good evening. So music in my current rotation is, I'm listening to a lot of Kalani. I'm listening to Danger Mouse's new album called Cheat Codes. Danger Mouse and Black Thought, amazing. And of course, Renaissance. Who isn't listening to Renaissance right now? I mean, I am, so. Oh, and there's some Bad Bunny in there as well. That's more like in my like mix. I'm talking about like just straight up albums. Wait, what's an infrared grill? It's, it's literally, it's an electric grill that uses infrared light to cook everything. Um,
Hey, did that work? Somebody tried to call- somebody tried calling me. Okay, good, good, good. But, yeah. What was I saying? Oh yeah, listening to Kehlani, Beyonce, and Danger Mouse. Those are my three albums right now. There we go. Rinsed out more of the peppers. Now, let's... Okay, so what am I doing now? So now that the peppers are roasted, um... We'll get to making the mushrooms. And I guess it's gonna be vegan today. I wish I had tofu in here, but I don't. I guess we're just doing mushrooms as our like base. And we've got a lot of mushrooms, so that's okay. Let's. Here. Frank Ocean is supposed to drop a new album before this year is over. Do I, am I into, yes. One of my biggest regrets is not seeing him at St. Andrew's Hall in Detroit when he was here. I love Frank Ocean so much. He's so great. Another person that I highly regret not seeing is uh, Childish Gambino. Um, and f f what's his name? He like low-key produces a couple of Beyonce's songs since Lemonade. Um, damn it! Also Solange, I love Solange. I'll, fi I'll remember his name, I'll figure out his name. Do I want to do butter or oil? Let's do oil and just make this fully vegan. We might as well. No. Might as well. So, we are going to season this oil as if we were going to make a curry, but we're not going to make a curry. We just want flavor. So this might look like your auntie's masala daba, but probably not the same. Well, maybe she's got some, some of the same. I've got star anise, got fennel, coriander, cumin. Um, this is Szechuan chili powder and white pepper and clove. So maybe they've got, maybe you've got family that's got some of the same, but this is a really Chinese heavy masala daba. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll do some white pepper. We'll do some star anise. We're gonna do some fennel. Uh, some clove, just that tiny, tiniest touch of clove. I don't know why I ground that much clove. Lots of, lots of cumin. Way nasty like that. Cumin. And then, what do we have here? We've got some garlic powder, because I don't have any garlic. This seems a lot. Uh, we've got some, ooh, yes, Urfa chili, which is like this chili that kind of smells like soy sauce, and I am so into this stuff. And... Black cardamom. Oops, nobody uses that thing anyway. All right. All right. You've got a little mixy mix. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, she's not. 
I'm, I'm very sorry that you can't smell this, but it smells amazing already. Uh, not from Burlap and Barrel, but also from friends of mine, uh, Diaspora Coat. Quickly, before the rest of them burn, I'm going to add a ton of turmeric. And by a ton, I mean like not that much at all, because turmeric is going to overpower it. And if we're going to use turmeric, we need to use black pepper, because black pepper makes turmeric healthier for you. Yes. I don't know why it smells like fried chicken, but it does. I guess I'm doing something right. How does it do that? So turmeric, the thing that makes turmeric good for you, I think, is called curcumin. And for your body to absorb curcumin, Black pepper makes it easier for your body to... I just unlocked a KFC recipe. Yeah. So for your body to uh, to absorb curcumin, it needs black pepper. You can see all the mushrooms absorbing all of that oil and the turmeric that's in there getting really nice and gold. And we're just going to let that hang out. Almost do almost like a dry fry situation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add all of the tomatoes at once and all of that water is going to leach out of the tomatoes and cook in with that with the mushrooms this is something that i really like to do with summer tomatoes it's like we'll do we'll do a stew of like some mushrooms and some vegetables and stuff and then we add tomatoes in and then we see how much water the tomatoes will give to this thing, which will be a lot of it. And uh, whole house looked like Fern Gully. This is two plants. So this is one, oops, sorry. That is one plant and that is another, that is one plant too. I had to just roll that one up in a ball because it got so big. But no joke, I swear to God, this smells like fried chicken. So fried chicken probably just smells like cumin and garlic powder, I'm guessing. All right, so this has pretty much absorbed all of the spice and all of the oil. So we're gonna add the tomatoes now. And you know, the tomatoes, oh, there are some other garbage tomatoes in here too. I'm gonna use these. So these are some like grocery store bought tomatoes that my partner bought and forgot about. They're not looking great. But you know what? They're pretty good for this purpose, where it's just like trash tomatoes as just sources of barely tasty water. I, leave, I do leave the skin on them. This 
Smells amazing. Yeah, I don't really, like, if I'm cooking for myself, I don't bother with, like, taking skin off. Any rest is, any recommendations for restaurants that I've been to recently on, in Metro Detroit? Um, where have I been to recently? Uh, well, here's a quick look at what we've got so far. As you can see, it is starting to leach and boil. And I will add this, I will cover this with water because I do want to add more stuff to it. But, I've got some Kashmiri chili too, why not? Add a little bit, it's just for color. We do love color. No salt, we'll add salt soon. Our salt is not going to be what plant is around the window. It is a golden pothos. Talk to us about our plants. Well, I've had the plants for a really long time. My plants are probably, I would say, about seven years old now? Both of these plants are seven years old. I kind of had them chilling out by a window a really long time and kind of only watered them like once a month or whenever I remember to. And then they just got really big, and I kind of fell in love with how big and crazy dramatic they got. And then I started take, taking care of them, but honestly, pothos live and thrive on neglect. They love to be just like left alone and like thriving on the bare minimum. Here I've got some old kimchi, you see. We will be using this as one of the parts, one of our sources of salt. Some clean tongs. Thriving on neglect mood, yes. Much of us, I suppose, have thrived on neglect. Kimchi in there. And we've got some, we're gonna put some denjang in here. Ooh, this smells good. So this is my, this is the salt, pretty much. Um, the Korean bean paste and kimchi are the sources of salt for this. Otherwise, this is just tomatoes and spices and um, literally just tomato spices and mushrooms. I haven't even put water in here yet, but you will see just how much water has come from the tomatoes. And again, we will be adding more water. I just want to add all of these and have them all like meld on their own and be like one cohesive thing by themselves first. 
and then we like cut it with water and then let that stew. But also like I want all the tomatoes, even though some of the tomatoes I put in here cold, I want them all to like get hot, like, and then like leach out their own water into I'm like trying to squeeze like some of these great tomatoes, but it's not working. All right, so we're gonna let that keep going. Um, we're gonna chop up some more. And just to mellow it out, the sources, so you gotta like, if you're gonna have something balanced, you need the salt, you need acid, you need all of that, that good stuff. But like, I like to balance it out with vegetal, balance soup out with like vegetal sweetness. And vegetal sweetness is like corn and these poblanos, which I am roughly cutting up because this is for me and for no one else. So I'm not really gonna try it. So we're adding roasted peppers as well as corn to this because A, it's what's in my fridge and B, we need to make this just a little less harshly salty after all that, all those sources of salt that we put in there. As well as the corn, which won't add any water to this, but. It's all good. It is so amazing how this soup has gotten how this pot has gotten almost so full with liquid and I haven't added any water to it yet. See? That's all from tomatoes. really thick. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that's really good. Oh, I almost don't want to put any water in this at all. If I put water in this, I will have to add salt. It is spicy though. I think all those chilies, not not the uh, poblano peppers, but like the chili powder and the urfa chili that I put in here was kind of spicy, but... Oh, and, and the kimchi, duh. Oh, this is good. This is very, very good. I didn't even blow on it. I did not. Um, I have this thing. I actually went to the dentist the other day and my dentist was like, you have some like weird trauma on the sides of your mouth. You know, the roof of your mouth. And I was like, are they, do they look like burns? And like, yes. Do you like to eat really hot food? And like, yes, yes I do. I burn my mouth all the time because I am too impatient to wait. We're gonna add some salt, add some water to this, let this stew for a bit, and we'll be all good. Uh, what can I use to bring some water over here? Oh, I've got... This one. Oh, you know what? We've got some... We've got some presents from, I don't know if any of you guys follow Alexis Nicole, the Black Forager. She's from Ohio, my neighbor in Ohio. And she gave us some gifts. Let's add some of that to this. So, she gave us some. 
she foraged some, uh, this, I think this, she called this, uh, she called this truffle, truffle moss. It kind of s smells like truffles. So we're gonna add this. We're gonna add some of this to it, and it is just, the way that it's just absorbing into the soup. Oh man, I'm gonna need to take a picture of this. So yeah, this is literally like this black moss seaweed. Kind of looks like wool, iron wool, but it smells of truffles, as well as this kombu that she foraged. Kind of just... It's giving nori. And who doesn't want that in soup? Watch the extra salty. Um, well, the thing is, the good thing about all this, the seaweeds and stuff is, is that they're not salty at all. Um, they're not processed. It's literally just the ingredient. can just do with stuff that's going bad in your fridge with a little help from like you know kimchi and Korean bean paste I feel like that stuff is always to the rescue in my life June from Delish um, I've heard of Delish but I'm not very well acquainted with exactly what it is I think maybe just like 20 minutes. 20 minutes and we're good. But who can wait that long for something that's so tasty? I think more than Jang though. in for a little bit because I like that fermenty there we go mm -hmm. Oops. give us a taste that came together nicely wow it looks amazing still not over kitchen. Just wait till you see my real kitchen. June's in New York City. I would love to meet them. Include, yeah, I wish we could like, I wish we had smell-o-vision. Man, it would be kind of cruel though if you could smell this and not taste any though, huh? Joanne would be so proud of me for making like a Korean, not a Korean, but yes, kind of using Korean ingredients, but making a vegan 
stew. See, I really wish I could like the comments. Any tips on vegetarian soups without overcooking the vegetables? Well, if you time it, it'll be great. First of all, you have to know which vegetables, what you want to do with each vegetable. So, for example, I use my, I put in my tomatoes first because I did not want the tomatoes for the sake of the tomatoes. I wanted the tomatoes for their flavored water. So I put in the tomatoes first. And then I also put in the mushrooms first because I know that it's almost impossible to overcook mushrooms. Mushrooms, no matter how long you put them in there, will be like mealy, not mealy, but will be meaty and great and satisfying no matter how long they cook. The vegetables that I, if I were, I didn't actually put any vegetables for texture in here, except for the corn, um, which I'll eat like with my hands. But if I was gonna put in any kind of vegetable, I would put in like, Potatoes, carrots, um, maybe a little bit of celery. I never really am too excited about celery. But like potatoes and carrots, for example, I would put them in now. Now, once the soup is done, I'll put those things in now and then cook those things in the soup that is done so that pretty much I'm just waiting for the vegetables to cook the way I like it which I like things to be a little crispy, a little bit more firm, not so much tender when it comes to vegetables and stew. And that's how I do it. That's how I time it anyway. I have guests, what happened? I can't see, um, I couldn't see the chat. I mean, sometimes you want to overcook your vegetables. I suppose so. Hey Siri, turn on all the lights. It got so dark. Hi hey, baby. I'm gonna join you for a little bit. What am I making? Oh, we already made it. We're gonna, we're probably gonna log off pretty soon, but how is my soup shirt not staying with soup yet? Cause I've got a layer of dog hair on it that's protecting me. This is Mochi everybody. And she's very happy to see you. Oh, the chat coming over for dinner. You guys would be welcome to. I don't have a table here yet. She looks like she's reading the comments. <laughs> have I been to Australia? I have been to Brisbane a couple of times. My cousins are from there. And I would love to see Melbourne. Show. Well, hello. Will I be uploading the live to YouTube? Sure, sure. I upload all my lives to YouTube. And it's really funny to watch too, because like, I think the last time I did a live, I lost like 50 subs. <laughs> but it was, I thought it was funny. It's fine. How does a college student make good Asian food without buying tons of ingredients? So, uh, trust, trust in convenience, in Asian convenience foods. You just gotta trust it. So, like, Japanese curry in the bag, in the bag that you can, like, microwave, or, uh, sorry, made him mad. Um, also, I also discovered uh, Korean sulongtang, 
which is like the beef the beef bone broth soup that is also that comes in like a package that you can just boil and it'll come out as like this amazing soup. Those and like dumplings are so good. So like trust in the fact that like just because you're a college student doesn't mean that there are like useless bachelors out there in Japan and China and Korea that just don't know how to cook anyway. So yeah, buy all of those stuff because that's made for with them in mind, but y'all can use it too. All you need is either a microwave or a hot water kettle and you're all set. That's how one, that's one way you can do it. And a rice cook, a good rice cooker helps too. Uh, I love K-Town. K-Town is like such a beautiful place. But that being said, um, we're almost at an hour, which is, seem to go so fast, but I should, am I gonna continue with the understandings? I will be, I will be. I just need to move all my spices here. I would love Scotland, I bet, I bet you I would. Um, I love haggis, I love blood sausage. Uh, or what's it called? It's not called blood sausage. Haggis, it is it, pudding. I think it's called blood pudding. Either way, it's good. And macaroni pie. Black pudding. Black pudding is what it's called. Yes, I've got some in my freezer. Um, there's a Scottish bakery called Ackroyd's and they send me like macaroni pie and I guess every now and then. But as I said, it was a pleasure cooking with you guys. I hope you learned a little something. I know I was just kind of like going at it my own way and like going at it on my own pace, but maybe those who stayed for the whole thing or for some of it got something out of it. Uh, but yeah, I will see you guys another time. Mochi, M-O-C-H-I. Did I grow, in, eating up, grow up eating up Taiwanese pork blood soup? I did not. But yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was super fun. I'm gonna try to do more of these. I'll be better about this. I'll be better about doing more of these. Especially once my like studio kitchen is all set. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and a wonderful week. <laughs> Bye guys.